I want you to turn your Bibles, if you can, to First uh, Peter, the third chapter, verses 15. I'm going to get into this series we've been on on Wednesday nights, and, and uh, this may be our last week in this. I'm not for, for sure if it's going to be yet, but it, we're looking that this could possibly be our last week on this series of Tell Someone. We've been talking about this, of how to share, why we should share uh, the gospel. Uh, sometimes we make it difficult. Last week we talked about how difficult sometimes we make it uh, for people to come to know who God is. How many knows that it's very simple uh that, that people make it hard i've heard this several times this week that that people are saying man the bible's hard this is hard that's hard we make it hard we make it that way the, the simplicity of the gospel is very straightforward that men if we would just believe in him if we would confess with our mouth we shall be saved there's some simplicity in that the hard part is following him Amen. It is hard to follow him at times. But how many knows that's why we keep coming to church, that we keep doing what we do and grow in our faith and grow in our maturity. But I, I want to, if I can, to finish this tonight about telling someone and talking about how, how that we should prepare our hearts uh, to, to, to share the gospel with some, someone. Uh, for some, I'm telling you, this is a, a hard thing uh, as a follower sometimes is to share the gospel. Because I realize that, that there's some folks that's just... Uh, they, they just are not good with talking with people. I know that there are a few people like that. There's some of you think, well, I've got to have all the right answers or the right words to say. How many of you feel, some of you feel that way? That, man, I've got to have it all together, or write the word, right words to say to someone before I can share the gospel. And then there's some people that, that, are, uh, that are sitting here that you just, you're like, man, it's just not my personality. It's not uh, the, who I am. It's not in my character. And there are some folks that, that, that are here tonight that, man, you could talk to a, fin, a fence post and lead it to the Lord. I'm telling you, you just ain't afraid of talking to nobody or anything. If it moves, you're talking to it. Man, praise God, you need to know about Jesus. Amen. That's wonderful. There's a, folk, there's a group. Those are our evangelists. Uh, in the church, those are people that just, man, are ready to share the gospel. I'm, I'm not looking in any direction, but there's some folks in here that, that can do that well. And praise God for that. Amen. There's some people that can, can just talk. But there's some that can't. They just, they just can't do it. But I believe that it's a, a, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're saved, you need to be sharing the gospel. And so I want to help you in that because I realize that some of you are not going to go share the gospel with the fence post. You are, you are going to be very reserved. That's who you are. That is your character. Uh, but at the same time, there is an opportunity. There is an open door that's going to present itself to you for you to share the gospel to someone. Amen. And I believe there's many open doors. I believe there's many opportunities that we have as followers of Jesus Christ because of how we live, how that people are looking at our lives. You may not be a person of many words, but I'll guarantee you people are watching your life. People are seeing what's going on in your life, and they're going to come to you, and they're going to say, hey, man, what's going on? Or, or, or they know what's going on in your life, and they see how that you're handling that in your life, and they're going to like, man, I don't know if I could do that. That's a golden opportunity to say, man, I'm telling you, I couldn't do it without God in my life. And so it gives you that opportunity to share the gospel. And it may be one-on-one -on -one for you. It may not be a shotgun blast of saying, praise God, love, you know, God loves you and all this stuff. It may not be that for you. It may be a one-on-one -on -one conversation that you have with someone. And I guarantee you that opportunity will happen in your life if we are obedient and here. But how many we need to prepare our hearts to, to share the gospel to other people? There's, there's some preparation that needs to take place in our our own personal lives. And I want to talk about that if I can for uh, a little bit tonight. I, I, and I want to say, like I said last week, every one of us has a story of how that God has radically rescued your life. Every one of you have that story. You, you know from where you was, B.C. or B.G. before God, and, and, and you are now where you're at now with God. And so every one of us has a before God and an after God story. And, and so that story is the greatest story. There's no other story like your story, and we need to share that. And, and I understand this sermon is, is not to make you feel bad. I, my purpose of preaching and, and speaking on this subject for the last several weeks is not to make you feel bad or condemn you if you're not always engaging in this area of, of giving the gospel message. This message is to encourage you and inspire you to say, hey, I can share the gospel with someone. I can talk to someone and tell someone about Jesus. So I don't want to put you down or try to, 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 to discourage you in this. It's, I pray that this sermons that we've been preaching and teaching on these Wednesday nights is really to encourage you to say, hey, I can because it's in me. I'm telling you, if you're a follower of Jesus, you, you, can't, you can't not tell someone. 
You can't. It's just going to come out of you because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your life, whatever is consuming your life, it's going to come out. And it's like a good restaurant, like I said a couple of weeks ago. If you go to that good restaurant, you're going to tell somebody about it. I mean, it's inevitable. I, if I go to a good place, I'm saying, man, you've got to go eat that shrimp. I'm telling you, it's good. Amen. I'll tell you later what that, where that place is at if you want to know. Amen. But anyhow, there's good places to go eat, and we tell people about it. And how many knows there's no greater place to eat than the house of God? Amen. First Peter 3, verse uh, 15 said this. He said, but in your hearts, re revere Christ as Lord. How many knows that we should just, it starts in the heart. And I'm talking about preparing ourselves to share the gospel tonight. And so the preparation starts in our heart of sharing the gospel. But he said, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Amen. How many of this a powerful scripture right there? Always be ready, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason. You may not have the answer to the question that they are asking, but I'll tell you, you do have an answer. His name's Jesus. Amen. You may not have an answer to the specific question that they are asking, but I'm telling you, you can share your story of how that God had radically changed your life from what you was to where you are today. And I'm telling you, and that's how we be prepared. But there's some areas that we should work on to begin to prepare the gospel. And you may look at this and say, what does it mean to prepare ourselves to share this gospel? What does it look like uh, for us to do this in our life? And I'm, I'm going to get there in just a moment. But, but many times we get bogged down in the mechanics mechanics of it. How many ever got bogged down in the mechanics of this is how I've got to do this? You know, you may have even went to an evangelist class or, or how to share the gospel, and those are wonderful. Those are great tools for you to use. But I'm telling you, many times it's just simply being who you are, real. Come on, how many, how many knows that people want to know somebody that's real? Facing life just like you face life, going through things just like you're going through things in your life. But they, the difference is, is you've got God, you've got someone that, that has radically changed your life, and you've made the decision, I choose to serve the Lord. I mean, we, that's just simply it. We have chosen to serve the Lord. We're making the choices every day to serve Him. I've made bad choices in my life. How many's made bad choices in your life? I've made bad decisions even in the last week of things in my life. But that, I woke up the next day and I said, you know what? I choose to serve the Lord. Amen. We've got to start making those decisions. So often, uh, many times, uh, evangelism training and being equipped and learning the specific ways and how to uh, articulate the right things of the story of Jesus. These are the things that we get bogged down in. We even, may even practice of how to tell the story of faith. And there's all kinds of areas of important things that are essential. But I'm telling you, uh, you'd be surprised if you would just simply pre prepare your heart and prepare your life to just give your story. And so, as we get into this tonight, we just need to be simply uh, simple with people. Of saying, hey, this is what it looks like. But we've got to do something about uh, our own lives. And we need to get prepared to give an answer uh, for the hope that's within us. And, and the first thing I want to talk about is this. We need to walk closely and intimate with Jesus. It, it, if we're going to share the gospel of Christ. How many knows that we need to have an intimate relationship with Christ? It's hard to lead people where you don't go. Man, it's hard to take people where you're not willing to go, even in your own life. You know, people look right through it. They see fake instantly. How many knows that people can recognize an, an imitation or a, a false trying to put on something that you're not? So we need to, to have a close relationship with God, an intimate relationship with Jesus and, and spend some time in the presence of the one who is the light of the world. And when we begin to sit, spend time at his feet and commune with him, I'm telling you what, we will begin to shine the light of the gospel. I wrote this down. I know it may be sound corny to you, but some of us need to get a sunburn, S-O-N. Yeah, that tells me that you've been in the presence of the Lord, Amen. I mean, you come get red from sunburn. All kind of, I'm telling you, that's because you've been in the presence of the sun. We need to get in the presence of God so much that people see the light of the world. When they, um, they, they see, amen, when you are spending time with God. When you're in a close, intimate relationship with Jesus, people, you don't even have to sometimes say anything. They just feel his presence, amen, around you. They can just see the glory of God on you, amen, because of, there's something about the presence of the Lord, Amen. 
And so we need to spend time with him and at his feet and, and be so close to pe uh, Jesus that, that people who are far away from him can see who he is and what he's trying to do in their life. Uh, and, and I can tell you, this is different than necessarily your prayer time. This is not, I'm not talking about your prayer time. There's a difference here. Spending your time in the presence of the Lord, this could be just you listening to good Christian music while you work. Come on. Spending time with God. What, what, is, what are we filling our time with? What are we filling our mind with? How many is with me tonight? You, 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 when you're spending time with Him in worship, whether you're working or whatever you're doing or riding in your car, and you've got worship music going on and you're worshiping God, this is different than your prayer time. This is your worship time. Can I tell you, you can worship outside of this place? Amen. Amen. Many times people think, well, I just can only worship God. No, man, my best worship is not in here. Amen. My best worship is diving down the road many times. And, man, I mean, tears rolling and things going on. I mean, I'm having a Jericho march right there in my car. And thank goodness there's nobody else around me because I'm fixing to run over somebody. Amen. Because there's something about worship. There's something about being in the presence of the Lord that will change your attitude and your heart and your mind. And when you have that intimate relationship with Him, I'm telling you, it will, it will change. So put on some good worship music. Be intentional about getting in the presence of God. You know, what a, quit sitting in front of all this other stuff and start sitting in, at His feet. Amen. And get in the presence of the sun. If you want the light of the world to shine in you, you got to get around the light. Amen. Start filling your mind with him. The second thing that we've got to do to prepare a heart to share the gospel is this, to learn to be highly responsive to the Holy Spirit. How many knows that we need to be highly responsive to the Holy Spirit? How many knows he's always nudging, guiding, talking, speaking? Amen. Always. He's always doing something, and, and we need to come to this place that, that we begin to recognize him. The Spirit of the living God is living on the inside of us compelling us and saying, I want to lead you, ask me, do something, come on, move. How many knows he's always wanting to move us? Amen. He's always wanting to compel us to do something, and so we need to be responsive to that, and, and, and we need to respond to the Spirit's whisper. How many's ever had the Spirit whisper something into your heart? Yeah, the Spirit of God, and we need to be responsive to that. But when we got a lot of other clutter going on, of junk in our life, how many knows it's hard to hear the whisper? And he, he knows how to get loud, too. How many knows the Holy Spirit knows how to get loud in our life? He knows how to nudge. How many's ever had that rib cage nudged a few times by the Holy Spirit? He knows how to do these things in our life. But we need to be responsive to that so he can direct our lives. Amen. It, so that we can speak and share the love uh, message of who Jesus is. And, and, and when we do that, I'm telling you, people will begin to respond to that. But we have to be responsive to that too. Uh, what keeps us from being responsive many times to the Holy Spirit is simply distractions. How many's ever been distracted? Yeah, we live in a world of distractions. I, I mean, I get distracted multiple times a day. Uh, it's called a cell phone. <laughs> Amen. I'm in the middle of a concentration. All of a sudden, my phone rings or dings or, or buzzes or whatever. And immediately, how will we do? Immediately, we just look at it and pick it up. It, there's all these things that's going on. That's just one thing that we do. How many knows that lack of priority sometimes will distract us? Pride will even distract us. Uh, getting uh, in all kinds of areas of our life of losing our, our passions or not being engaged. How many of these can become distractions in our life? And when we get distracted, we can't do what God has called us to do. And we will not listen and hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Uh, how many ever been fishing? And, 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 and Jesus said to be fishers of men. And so that's where I'm going with this. But you lost uh, your concentration and you got distracted and you lost a fishing pole. Or lost the fish. I've done that. I don't know how many times. I mean, I'm sitting there fishing. Man, I, all of a sudden something happens. I get distracted. I look off. I look back and it is gone. Not there no more. I missed a big one. That's what happened. I missed something there. And that's what we do when we get in, distracted in this world. Man, we're missing opportunities. We're missing moments that God is wanting to put in your life to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. And can I tell you, when you share the gospel with someone and they're converted, there is no joy like having that kind of joy in your life. The Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul being saved. And so let's, let's don't miss out on the opportunities that the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to do. We've got to prepare our hearts. We've got to get into that place where we're being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm telling you, that starts with you waking up in the morning and saying, Lord, help me today to be responsive and sensitive to what you want me to do today. Amen. Number three is we've got to engage in faith-filled 
frequent prayer. Amen. Faith filled. How many knows we've got to have some faith filled? We believe in what we're praying. Amen. And when we do that, I'm telling you, it will change situations in our heart and in our life. Uh, we're called to this adventure of prayer. We're called to uh, praying at all times. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says pray without ceasing. How many knows that, that we need to continually to be praying over things? And, and it's not that we have to continually pray. I like We get to continually pray. Amen. It's not like I have to continue. I get to. Amen. How many of us we get to? We have the opportunity in our culture and our world to pray anytime that we want to pray. Amen. How many ever prayed in Walmart, walking through Walmart? Lord, help them. You just help me, Jesus. You can pray anywhere. Amen. I've had the Holy Ghost hit me right in the middle of Walmart before. How many ever had that happen? Amen. I'm telling you, it's wonderful. Wonderful. We need to. We need to always kind of be in a mind of prayer. And that doesn't mean that we'll always be in a mind of prayer. That means we get to have a mind of prayer. Another way of putting this is in Scripture, too, when he's talking about this, is don't give up praying. That means that we need to be consistent in our prayer lives. Pray without ceasing. Don't quit praying. Don't, don't stop praying over situations and things. So we need to have, be engaged in a faith-filled, uh, frequent prayer in our lives. Because when we do this, uh, we, when we have this conversation with God in our life, how many knows that we can receive power because of that conversation? We receive wisdom. We receive vision. We, we receive leading of the Holy Spirit to share the good news of Jesus when we're in this state of mind that we're praying Every day in our life. And how many knows it's, a, it's an art and a discipline that's lost some t- somewhat in our culture? A prayer. We need to get back to prayer. In addition to prayer, we need to sp- uh, be spontaneous throughout our day with this prayer too. That you don't have to have just a specific time. And how many knows it's important that you be consistent and have a specific time that you pray? But there's going to be times where prayer is going to come on you. It's going to be spontaneous. And that's the wonderful thing. We can pray without ceasing. The fourth thing is this. We've got to immerse ourselves in, in the Word of God and follow what it teaches. How many of us have we got to put ourselves in the Word? Place ourselves in the Word. Live the Word. Amen. The heart of evangelism is rooted in the Word of God. If you want to be an evangelist, and many, th- many people's like, I don't know if I want to be an evangelist. I don't know if I'm called to be an evangelist. Come on. But how many knows that every follower of Jesus Christ, you're going to share the gospel, amen, with someone, and that's rooted in the Word of God because when you get the Word of God in you, you're going to share it with someone. The pathway for us to, uh, to share the gospel and, and, to, and to come to the place where people put their faith in Jesus Christ is laid out in the pages of God's Word. And that's how we learn. We get the Word of God in us. And all through the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, we need to believe that it is true and it's powerful and study it faithfully and seek ourselves to, to bend and not be stubborn uh, and, and, and become submissive to the teaching of the Word of God. How many has been stubborn and, and not bent towards the Word of God? We have. We all have been there. But we have to submit ourselves to the Word of God and let that Word of God consume our lives so that we can share the gospel with others. Number five is this. We've got to strive to walk in holiness and repent when you fall into sin. Amen. We're living this out in our lives as well. We're sharing the gospel with many people as we can, but that's the, that's the realness of it, that we are, we're in the same place many times, that we are living this out even in our own lives. And when we fail, when we have uh, things going on in our life and we sin, how many knows that we need to walk in holiness? How many, holiness is not necessarily what we put on the, on the outside. Holiness is what the condition of our heart is. A relationship with God, an intimate relationship with Him is what holiness is. And so we need to seek holiness and strive to walk in holiness and repent when we fall into sin. Amen. Don't just be haughty and prideful and say, man, I've never sinned or I've never done these things. Man, get that sin out of your life. The quicker you get out of, the, uh, out of your life, the, 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 the less it will take root in your life. Amen. There's nothing like just leaving something hanging around in your life. It will take root in your life and grow into something. I don't, how many of you ever just took up a little bitty tree? It's a little bit easier, isn't it? How many's ever had to cut down a big tree and get all the roots out? It's difficult. Amen. It was time consuming. It's hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's so much easier when you go out there and get that little thing out of your life immediately. And same thing with sin. Get the sin out of our lives and repent so that we can go on and do what God wants us to do. Amen. And I'm telling you, when we do this, it starts with us getting the Word of God in our lives. Amen. And knowing what the Word says. How many knows if we don't know what the truth is, we won't live it? And so we got to know what holiness is. we got to know what the truth is. And, and probably one of the greatest gifts that was ever given to me in my life was the Bible. 
Man, I remember my parents bringing me my first Bible. Can I tell you, parents don't underestimate the power of you giving a Bible to your child. Don't underestimate the power of that. It's powerful. And I remember uh, getting that Bible, and, and, and I was told to read it. And I did. I said, man, you need to read this. And, and many people that get saved and become followers of Jesus Christ, that's one of the first things we need to tell them. Hey, get into the Word of God. It's the most powerful thing that you can do. And read it. And you know what? I didn't only read it. I believed it. Amen. I believed it, and it, called me to, it caused me to have an intimate relationship with him. And, and, and then they told me, said, hey, you need to memorize this scripture. So I did. And I'm telling you, there's scriptures still to this day that will come to me that I learned from a child. That men will come back to my remembrance, and I'll remember that scripture because it was in me. That's what David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Come on, we've got to put it in the treasure chest of our hearts so that when we need it, we can pull from it. If it ain't there, you can't pull from it. And you don't know what holiness is, and you don't know how to, to live in, 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 in your life. And so this is how we prepare, amen, some things in our hearts, amen. And, and we need to have the Word available in our minds, and it will certainly help us if it's there in our minds. Amen. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 13 said this right here. He says, so think clearly and exercise self-control. That's a pretty powerful scripture right there, isn't it? Heaven knows we need to do some exercising. Yeah. So think clearly and exercise self-control. Look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Christ, when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. Come on, how many knows he says, hey, let's stay holy. Let's, let's live in an intimate relation. Let's get sin out of our lives. Amen. He, said, he goes on and says, you didn't know uh, any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says you must be holy because I am holy. You must be holy because I am holy. I believe one of the best ways we can prepare to share this amazing story of Jesus is to seek holiness. Seek holiness. And again, I'm not talking about what we may put on or, or how we can look on the outward appearance. How many, how many of us we can appear holy? Amen. We know, well, some of us know how to do that. We can do it. We can appear holy. But it's the condition of our hearts that's the, pro that's the issue. And that's where holiness begins. And so sometimes we fall short of this because we don't humble ourselves. And, and, and we don't realize that, that, that we need to not be rebellious, amen, in some areas of our life and say, I repent, Lord. How many of ever just had to fall at the feet of Jesus? Man, I've had to fall at his feet so many times. And, and so holiness is getting to know him closer and closer. Number, number six is this. We, we build close and loving friendships with people outside of the family of God. How many knows it's important? I know this may sound obvious to many of you here tonight, but you'd be staggered to know that many Christians, including pastors many times, they do not have friends that are outside of the house of God. And I know this is sounding crazy to some of you. like, wow, we need to have friends. How many knows that we need to, to be friends to those that are lost? Now, I, I, I want to warn you, don't get me wrong here. If you're a new follower of Jesus Christ, I know it would be difficult for you to go back and hang around with old friends and old friendships, and you need to come out from some of those things. But you, if you are a mature uh, Christian walking in with God, I'm telling you, you need to learn how to become friends with the sinner people. Amen. Look at people and say, man, I want to be your friend. Because if you don't have friends with sinners, you're not going to be able to lead nobody to Jesus. Amen. And how many knows that they need a friend? They need someone that's a light in a dark place. We need to, to be someone that says, hey, man, I, I don't know what's going on in your life, but, man, here, I just want to share something about Jesus. And you become that to them. And, 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 and how many of those, it begins with friendship. It's hard to share the gospel with someone that you're not friends with many times. They don't receive it. But somebody that you've befriended, you, you become a friend to, man, they begin to trust you. You begin to build that relationship with one another. And all of a sudden, you begin to share the gospel with them. Man, they become receptive to it because they know your life. They know who you are. And I'm telling you, if we're going to change our culture and the people that's around us, we need to start looking at other people and say, man, I want to start friending them. I know their life's all messed up. and Everything else is going on. But, man, God, I know that God will even lead you to people like that. He will. There's going to be somebody you work with or somebody that you're hanging around that, man, they're like, God, there's no way I'd ever be friends with them. Oh, don't say that. Because that's when the Holy Spirit says, hey, that's the one I want you to befriend. Because that's the one that he's wanting to save. 
That's the one that he wants to see their life changed. And in closing tonight, the, the last thing I want to talk about is get comfortable sometimes saying, I don't know. I know that sometimes we don't need to be controversial in, in, in trying to know everything about the scripture. How many of it gives eases people's minds sometimes when you simply just like, man, I don't know the answer to that. Amen. Some people feel uh, the best way to share our faith is being sure that we have the answer for everything. How many knows that sometimes we don't have the answer for everything? And others feel sometimes that they're convinced that they need to have the answer so they can defeat uh, a non-believer friend and, and show them where they're at because of all the knowledge that they have. How many knows that is arrogant and prideful? And I don't, I don't believe people will even come to know who God is when we're always having a controversy and debate with people. How many of those, well, sometimes we just need to say, I don't know, amen, what's going on. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of reason. I'm a huge fan of, of believing that we need to be ready to share our faith and know and understand the word of God. Don't get me wrong in what I'm saying here, but there's sometimes that you just don't know the answer. And so don't try to fabricate or come up with something that you don't know. Amen. To simply say, I don't know. And so when you're confronted with that question, many times you just say that, and you may even follow up with this right here. Hey, why don't we just study this out together? Yeah. Amen. Why don't we just study this out together so we both can come to the answer of this? I'm saying that lets down so many guards. I've been a follower of Jesus for a long time, the majority of my life. I've been a, a, in, a, in a pastor's position for over three decades. And can I tell you, I still don't have it all together or know everything. Amen. I have studied the Word of God. I, I, I remember, memorized Scripture. But I'm telling you, there are times that I just don't know the answer. And it's sometimes we just need to say that, hey, that I just don't, need, don't know the answer. And, and when we, we say this sometimes, it disarms people. And people feel comfortable to know that, hey, they're human like I am. But we're going to find it out. I'm going to find the answer for you. I'll dig into this. Look at it with me too. Let's study this together. Let's find out the answer. In the Word of God. How many knows the Word has an answer? The Word of God has an answer. We'll never lead people to Christ through argument and debate. I believe that. We'll never lead them. You're debating and controversy and all these things. And what, what's happen, what happens when we do this, we become critical and cynical of people. Amen. I love what a, a quote that Tom Rainer said. Sadly, for most Christians, it's easier to criticize rather than to evangelize. Man. Sometimes it's easy just to criticize things and look at things and say, bless God, blah, 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 and all these things. When he's saying, hey, share the gospel. Share who you are. Tell others about me. And, I, and these are extremely important points that we brought. These seven things that, that we had on this list of preparing our heart. I'm telling you, when you begin to get these things in your heart and your life, I'm telling you, it'll begin to change the way that you approach sharing the gospel. When you begin to get intimate with Him, when you begin to study the Word of God, when you begin to do these things that we talked about here tonight, I'm telling you to begin to change the way that you approach of how I'm going to share. Because so many times we come and we want to just blast people and, and, and think we got all, the, all of it together when all they want to hear is, hey, what did He do in your life? How did He change you? And I'm telling you, that's the most powerful thing that you can do. I want to read this scripture again tonight in closing. 1 Peter 3 and 15, he said, But in your hearts revere Christ is Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Do this with gentleness and respect. How many knows there's a way to share? It's through love. It's through love. Loving people. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is going to give you an opportunity. The Holy Spirit is going to nudge your heart and your life. And he's going to say, hey, I want you to talk to that person. I want you to share with that person. I want you to do this or do that. I mean, we need to be obedient in those things. Because there's a life at stake. There's an eternity at stake. Of sharing the gospel with someone. Can we stand our feet?